Festus Claude McKay was born on September 15, 1889 in Clarendonville, Jamaica. Locals referred to this town as Sunnyville as it was a mostly black community. He was the youngest child and was born to a family of farmers. Although the family was considered a peasant family, they had enough land to vote. His mother was of Mag Malagasy heritage and his father was Ashanti heritage. Their African pride was a key part of his childhood. Claude began writing at the age of 10. He learned a great deal from his older brother, who was a school teacher, as well as an English neighbor named Walter Jerkel. These two exposed Claude to British writings, the Romantics, philosophy, and more. Jerkel had always advised Claude not to abandon his Jamaican dialect in his writings. When he was 17, Claude left Sunnyville to start a woodworking apprenticeship. In Kingston, Jamaica, where he was working, it was a predominantly white community and he had encountered racism for his first time. Within a year, he left to return back to Sunnyville. In 1912, Claude wrote Songs of Jamaica and Consteb Ballads. Both books of verse were produced by a London publishing company. These were a set of poems that were written in Jamaican dialect and showcased life in Jamaica. Claude was awarded a stipend for these works and used his money to go to the United States. His first stop was South Carolina. In South Carolina, he was also exposed to racism, so he went to Alabama. Here he attended Tuskegee Institute, only staying for two months, then left for Kansas State, where he stayed there for two years, and then left for New York in 1914, where he encountered yet again even more racism. In 1917, he wrote several poems for Seven Arts Magazine as Eli Edwards. At this time, he also wrote poems and articles for Pearson's Magazine. One of his most known works was Two White Fiends. Over the next few years, Claude established a relationship with Max Eastman. Eastman at the time was a communist sympathizer, and in 1920, he traveled to Europe to visit several countries. While in Europe, he wrote his collection, Spring in New Hampshire, and as well as Harlem Shadows, which was his most popular from the collection. These poems would later be the title of another one of his collections. In 1921, Claude returned to the United States. He became involved with the Universal Negro Improvement Association and wrote several articles for Negro World. During this time, he released Harlem Shadows, a collection of poems containing If We Must Die, which is one of his most prominent works. Many say that Max Eastman helped influence this poem. This poem threatens violent retaliation by blacks for the racial abuses they have endured under white oppression. If we must die, oh, let us nobly die so that our precious blood may not be shed in vain. Then even the monsters we defy shall be constrained to honor us though dead. Oh, kinsmen, we must meet the common foe, though far outnumbered, let us show us brave, and for their thousand blows deal one death blow. What though before us lies the open grave, like men we'll face the murderous cowardly pack, pressed to the wall, dying but fighting back. He then left for the Soviet Union and attended the Communist Party's Fourth Congress. Over the next 11 years, he traveled through Europe and wrote three novels, Home to Harlem, Banjo, and Banana Bottom, as well as a short story collection. Home to Harlem was published in 1928 and tells the story of a black soldier, Jake, and a black writer named Ray. When in the military and exposed to white culture, Jake almost instinctively leaves the military to return home to Harlem. Ray, on the other hand, an intellectual pessimistic, endures racism in the United States until he can no longer stand it and flees home to Haiti. Claude spoke about the distasteful parts of black life in New York, like prostitution and gambling. His critique of black life in Harlem and his portrayal of the other side of Harlem was not like the black leaders at the time, like W.E.B. Du Bois. This novel won Claude the Harmon Gold Award for Literature, and he is accredited with having the first commercially successful novel as a black writer. Shortly after writing Home to Harlem, Claude wrote Banjo, a story without a plot. 
The novel follows two characters, Banjo and Ray, that live in France. They both are unhappy with the limitations of being black in white society and end up leaving. Although this was a very known book, his novel did not receive the same level of success as Home to Harlem. This next novel, Banana Bottom, also didn't do as well. The novel told the story of a young woman named Bitta. Bitta was a Jamaican peasant who was adopted by white missionaries. She was exposed to Christian, organized Christianity as well as the English education system. She soon left England in order to return home to Jamaica pursuing happiness. Claude hit home with these ideas and the, the concept that white society was a burden on a black individual. He created the, these idealized visions of Jamaica and black communities. Ginger Town is a set of short stories that explore life in Harlem, which is seen as black exploitation. Again, he includes stories idealizing Jamaica. In 1934, after these writing, Claude returns home to Harlem. He is accepted into the Federal Writing Project in 1936 and begins working on his autobiography. A Long Way From Home talked about Claude's own obstacles as a black man in a white society. He brings up the impacts of colonialism and segregation. He felt that blacks should unite against this white oppression, and many do not see the accurate autobiography because it, in it he denies ever joining the Communist Party. By this time, he had started to distance himself from the socialist ideals of his early life. In the late 1930s, Claude took an interest in Catholicism. He was an active member in Harlem's Friendship House, and he wrote the essay, Negro Metropolis. This essay talks about what black Harlem communities were like in the 1920s and 30s. Claude then went to Chicago and became a teacher at the Catholic organization. During this time, he endured several illnesses and died from heart failure in 1948. Claude's writings are still making news today. Just recently, Amiable with Black Teeth, a novel of the love affair between communism and poor black sheep of Harlem was discovered and published. Many believe that Claude was bisexual. In many of his writings, especially Home to Harlem, he hints at male relationships between characters. He also would describe romantic relationships without technically mentioning the gender of either character. Although married, it is suspected that he had relationships with both men and women throughout his life. Claude impacted the Harlem Renaissance through his writings and unique points of view. His relationship with the Communist Party and his stays in the Soviet Union gave him a different outlook on Harlem and the black community. He was unafraid of mentioning the dark times and the negative attributes of being a black person in a white society.